I found in my wife's emails she did it with a professor in my own bed, so I made a bait, and she took it only to find herself exposed and ashamed publicly while my stomach hurt from laughing. This story is about 12 years old. I told it to one of my coworkers yesterday and he said I should share it on Reddit. Today he again nudged me so here we are having drinks before the four-day weekend and my writing is complete. In college, I met the woman who I thought was my one. We dated for about two years and had a big damn wedding after a ten-month engagement. Her family was pretty well-to-do in a small southern town. We were both continuing our education and I was also working to support us. I was pursuing a master's in engineering while she was finishing her doctorate in anthropology. Over the summer, an opportunity came up for her to make some extra money going as an aide on a religious studies trip to Jamaica. I didn't hesitate when she asked me about it. I mean, she was going to get to visit Jamaica and get paid for it. I saw no downside other than missing her being at home for six weeks. Little did I know at the time, but she had been ducking the professor, he had hung out with us, smoked my green tea and drank my ducking beer, I considered him a friend, who arranged the trip for a couple months, and it was a getaway for them to do it regularly all over the island. I, clueless and happy, went about the weeks while she was gone taking extra shifts so I could match what she made in our account and surprise her. What a dip crap, right? One of the students from the trip actually seeked me out to clue me in. I didn't believe him until I started looking for evidence on my own. I broke down and checked her texts while she was sleeping and nothing was there. There were a few VMs, so I decided to listen. And there it was, a message from that giant a-hole saying how exciting it was that I almost caught them. I opened up her laptop and hit the emails after that. It was piles and piles of crap, making fun of me for not knowing, ducking in our bed and laughing about it. There was so much and I was so heartbroken. Still too hurt to take any action, I was lost. I had no idea what to do, so I sat on it for a couple weeks and acted as normally as I could. I noticed everything now. I felt so stupid for not seeing it before. So many signs. One stuck out in particular. I noticed that our stash of homemade, green tea, oiling, if you've never tried it, I highly recommend giving it a go, was going down even though we weren't having Zex. It was obvious they were also using the fruits of my labor to get off more effectively. This really pissed me off. Like, unreasonably so, Hulk ducking mad. It finally all hit me. I was a goddamn joke to these a-holes and they were using the oiling I made and ducking in my bed. I didn't hurt anymore, I just wanted to make them hurt. So, while she was studying at the library, I made a new batch of oiling. I put enough green tea in it for it to smell like normal, but I also added some poison ivy from our backyard to the mixture, and after refilling the spray bottle we used for application, I waited. A few days go by and I'm working extra so I can be out of the house more and bam, bait taken. That night after she goes to sleep, my plan goes into action. I sneak her phone away and delete my contact while replacing his phone number in his contact as mine. I go to bed but can't sleep because it feels like I'm five and tomorrow is Christmas. Dawn arrives and she's in the shower. I get a text. She, I'm super itchy, are you okay? Now Lord, now is my time. She, Look, I thought it had cleared up, but I guess I had a flare-up. I'm sorry, but I've got herpes. And I guess you do now, too. I heard this ditch squeak in the shower. I'm covering my mouth damn near losing it. I went on to tell her that it was time to end things now. A new semester was about to start, and I kind of have a little crush on another TA. I wanted her mad. This is a woman that never got told no growing up and never had to deal with rejection, let alone from a balding dude in his 50s with herpes. When she got out of the shower, it was obvious she had been crying, but I could see the anger in her eyes. I could see how uncomfortable she was, squirming at the table, drinking coffee, and mulling the situation over. Another little nudge is what she needed. The reply she got to her pages and pages of anger and sadness was, Thanks for the good times, but can you keep this a secret between us? I don't want to ruin my chances with anyone else. She's flush with anger now, just seething. She gathered her keys and headed out the door without even saying goodbye. I knew where she was going. I booted up her laptop and set it to reformat, deleting her dissertation and any notes pertaining to it before following her to campus. I parked a few lots over and rushed over to his office where I found her screaming at him for giving her herpes. There's lots of people there, 
professors, aides, students, other faculty. I'm dying. He is beyond embarrassed and confused as duck. She is ugly crying in front of her peers. I'm in heaven. I didn't even care that people were going to think I had herpes too. The fallout was apocalyptic in their department. He lost his job due to code of conduct at the university. We got divorced the following year. State law was we had to be separated for one full year before being granted a divorce. I got to keep most of the assets, primarily savings and not a ton, but I worked for it. She never finished her doctorate and went on to be a perpetually pregnant housewife that sells Herbalife on Facebook and he teaches high school now. It took a few years for it all to unfold, but watching it was glorious. I set up a camera and caught fiancé doing it on my couch with a school friend. So I made her lose her house and karma doubled the damage unexpectedly. This has been four years ago, so the sting is gone and my revenge has been had. We dated for four years and had what I thought was a great relationship. We were both well-established professionals who both owned homes in the same neighborhood and both with daughters in the home. Her daughter was 11 and mine was 16 when we met. We had actually planned to get married, build a house, and raise the two together. We planned the house build because she had recently been diagnosed with a neurological disease that would eventually put her in a wheelchair and need something ADA-friendly. During the planning stages, I began doing landscape and construction projects on her home to increase the resale value. All in, I invested roughly $30K USD into the home, running everything through my side construction business for tax, permitting, and resale purposes. We had a contract that payment would be made upon the sale of the home. I produced invoices for each and every project, but never pushed for payment because of the prior agreement. Fast forward six months, we're looking at property to develop and finalizing drawings on the home when I began feeling ill. I couldn't eat, constantly vomiting and passing blood. I began noticing that my abdomen looked swollen, which was odd because we were both very clean eaters and were in the gym every day. So I went to the doctor and began having tests done. During this time, she began having small cognitive issues, and the stress of her current position was exacerbating her condition. So she took a $1.20K per annum cut in pay, along with a lesser position inside the company. After a month or so of different tests and a biopsy, it came back that I had a golf ball-sized tumor in my stomach and would need to begin chemotherapy. So I began chemo and radiation treatments, which made me, expectedly so, extremely ill. She was spending time helping around my place on the weekends and staying over more, to the point that they were both at my home, more than theirs. At this point, I suggested that we go ahead and put one of our houses on the market and move in together until the new house is built. I have great supplemental insurance as well as a long-term illness plan, so using that coupled with the sale of one of our houses would push us through comfortably, and help ease the financial stress on her. Shortly after this discussion, she became extremely distant. Her daughter wasn't coming down and hanging out with mine anymore. She had excuses for not getting together. She quit driving me to treatments and stopped staying over. She then dropped a bomb, a sentence that will forever be burned into my psyche. I love you, but I can't see myself taking care of someone this sick in the long term, and I don't think we should see each other any longer. In a text. It broke me, I won't lie. This was the first woman I had ever opened up to and planned a life with since my wife passed away when my children were one and three. However, I tried to be mature about it. I forced myself to understand her position and to accept what I could not change. I calmly, the next day, gathered all of her things, packed them neatly, loaded them in my truck, and took them to her house to leave on the back porch while she was at work in order to avoid any awkward exchanges. Walking around the back and under the porch cover, I sat down in a box and saw her in her back living room, on the couch having sex with a man that she had introduced to me as a lifelong friend. I had dinner and drinks with this man and his girlfriend. We had gone on vacation with them as well. I never spoke of the incident with her and simply sent her a text later, explaining that I would leave her things on my side porch to pick up at her convenience. I discovered eight or nine months later from his now ex-girlfriend that they had broken up due to him confessing that he had been sleeping with my S.O. 
dating back to about the time we were finishing drawings on the new home. Now I'm pissed. Revenge time. At this point, I'd finished chemo and radiation for the time being and was feeling healthier. I was going through some much-neglected paperwork when I ran across the file that contained $32,680 in unpaid, long-overdue invoices, which were promptly sent to my attorney to begin lien proceedings on the home. It turns out that I couldn't have done this a moment too soon because she was set to put her house on the market. Coupled with interest over the course of what was then 19 months overdue, the invoices were hefty. That, along with the agreement of settling them when the house was sold and attorney fees, left her with roughly $10K after the sale of the home and settling her current mortgage. She promptly had to back out of the purchase of another home and moved in with her oldest daughter, S.I.L., and two grandchildren. She also had to leave her job and begin receiving disability. I ran into her a little over a year ago, and she looked as if she had aged 20 years and was in the wheelchair we had talked about. We chatted cordially but briefly, and I excused myself and went on with my day. A few days later, her younger daughter called me and spoke of my running into her mom, and could we hang out sometime? I gave a vague answer, thanked her for calling, and again went on with my day. The ex then called me a week or so later and began apologizing for leaving me as she did. Again, cordial but short, I thanked her for calling and hung up. She began texting, and this went on for several weeks until one she asked if I could ever see us rekindling what we had, to which I replied, I can't see myself taking care of someone so sick in the long term. Remember the box on your back porch? Did you think that lifelong friend brought that over to you from my house? Good luck to you.